Hey, it's Ice and in this episode we are going to make projectiles and specifically we are going to add projectiles that our player can throw and damage enemies. Ok, so first of all let's create it. We are gonna make it on the base of hitbox. So go to overlap and hitbox, here scene, new inherited scene, choose hitbox, rename it to player dagger and now add a sprite to it. And let's set it. First of all, our player dagger, it will exist in projectile and it will collide with environment and enemies. Now, let's add the sprite. We need it to point straight right, so we are gonna rotate the sprite, not the dagger, but exactly the sprite. And now let's set the collision shape. And let's save it at a separate folder called projectiles. Now, before everything else, let's add it to projectile group, because it will be very useful when we will be checking what an object it is. Extend the script, and here, create an integer export variable called speed, and in the physics process method, change the global position by speed multiplied by direction multiplied by delta. Direction is the result of rotating a vector pointing straight right by the rotation of our dagger. For instance, if our rotation is zero, so it's not rotated, so it will go right. Let's check it. As you can see, it goes right. And if we rotate it a little bit, it will go in this direction. Great. Okay, now let's make it collide and break. First of all, let's create the method called destroy, and it will just destroy our dagger. Now, since it's an area 2D, we can connect its signals, connect the area entered and body entered signals, and in them call the destroy method we have just created. You may ask, why didn't I call Q3 in both of them if it's just one line of code? Because you might add some functionality later down the road, like sound effects or visual effects for destroying a projectile. That's why. However, it will not be destroyed when it leaves the screen borders if it doesn't collide with anything. You might encounter a problem when you have a ton of daggers out of your screen, you cannot see them but they still exist and where there is a lot of them, it becomes really a problem. So in order to delete them, we will use visibility notifier 2D node. Just connect its screen exited signal and in this new method, just delete the dagger. So you can see it here. Right now it exists. But now it was out and then it was deleted. Okay, so now we can make the player throw them. Go to player scene, open its script, and before we start adding the methods, go to project settings and the input map, add an action called action attack. And I'll connect mouse left button for it. So this action is called every time we press mouse left button. Ok, and in player script, let's make a method called throw dagger. I have already written the functionality here, but I forgot to write the reference. So create a reference variable. Here is our packed scene, and here we check if it exists, if it's not now, then we instantiate the dagger, we add it to the node tree, we set the position of it, and then we determine the dagger rotation that is based on the direction from the player to mouse position. And then we convert this direction into radiance and set the rotation of the dagger to this value. And in physics process now add this. So now our player will throw daggers at any time the action attack is pressed. However, we can make it a little bit better. So we can receive dagger throw in direction and then convert to rotation. So here in the brackets write dagger direction of type vector 2. Let's copy that and instead of this part write dagger direction. And now where we call this method in physics process, add this dagger direction, direction from the player to mouse and pass it to the throw dagger method. Let's check it. 
as you can see, our player can throw the dagger. However, you might want to add some cooldown, because it's way too fast, right? And it's quite easy, actually. Go to player, add a timer node for it, rename it on attack timer, set it to one shot, and probably let's set it to 0.2, the wait time in the script, add a reference to it. Here in throw dagger, at the very end, start this timer, and in physics process, after you check whether the action was pressed, add the next condition, and attack timer is stopped. So it starts when a dagger is thrown, and it stops after 0.2 seconds, and then we can throw one dagger again. As you can see, I can no longer throw it that fast that we could. The problem is, our daggers are not colliding with the enemy. Let's check if it deals damage. Oh, it does deal damage. So what's the problem? The problem is that our herd boxes are not set to monitorable. So they detect the dagger being in their area, but the dagger does not detect this Hermox. So what's the workaround here? We can directly call the destroy method from our enemy base, which is in fact entity base. We need our herbox area entered method here. And here, remember I told you let's add our dagger to projectile group. We will check if the hitbox is a projectile by using his group. And here you go. You check if it's in group projectile and destroy it. It's working. So that was it for this episode, I hope it was useful and you liked it, and if you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It was Ice and until next time.